Audio on. Window on. Streaming shortly banner off. We will be starting momentarily. And I probably didn't bring up the correct page like I'm supposed to. The correct page, of course, is the README streaming page, which provides us with a agenda of what we're going to do, but we never actually do it. So really, I could have put up just nothing, and it would be equally accurate. Okay, uh, before we get started, and of course, technically, we've already started, so that is a misnomer. I'm going to quickly check to see if anybody um, in my Discord wants to join us, or if anybody at all wants to join me in Discord, provided that you're somewhat not terrible person. Um, and you could join me on voice in Discord, and we could be uh, we could be like voicing the stream together, uh, which is not as exciting as it sounds. In fact, it's very not exciting um, because it's a boring stream. Okay. So yesterday I had really kind of screwed up the DigitalOcean server, and I think I might have actually turned it off completely, uh, but I don't care. Um, we also need to do a lot of other stuff with the uh, with the DigitalOcean server. It's running a lot of processes it doesn't need to run. A lot of the stuff for the server is in a, in a different Git, which, which is okay, except I'm not using that Git anymore, and it was sort of a shared Git, so we kind of need to move it all to BC Git. Although I realize that some people would argue every project should have its own Git, um, and they are wrong, so screw them. Um, somebody else was asking me, I'm not going to reveal their name because they did not, don't necessarily want to be publicized, um, uh, how they could get, for example, the right ascension and declination of a planet over time so they could draw it on, on a star chart. Um, I'm almost sure there should be a, a, an API that does that already. Uh, if not, I could create one, but again, we have, a, we have a bigger issue with my APIs, which is at some point I need to look at, and I might even ask this as a question, um, getting my APIs to continue uh, after my process terminates, meaning the process of keeping me alive. Um, so what we're going to do today is look a little bit at uh, e exponential data fitting. And again, I do not believe in predictive statistics. This is not to predict the future. This is just to analyze the past. Um, now, we did look briefly at taking the logarithm of the data and best fitting a line to it, um, which is one way to do exponential uh, exponential fitting, but I probably should have mentioned this at the time. It is not the, the, it does not minimize the error. It minimizes the error of the logs compared to the logs, but it doesn't minimize the error of the actual data compared to the actual data because taking the logs, um, I think someone just said, pointed out, it basically, um, it basically uh, gives less, more importance to lower values. Uh, so we're going to do it for real, and I'm going to do it without actually knowing how to do it, which is exciting. Um, but hey, you know, that's that's how Maxima hopefully will work for me. Now, there's one other thing that's going to be a minor point that's, like all minor points, is going to end up taking more time than the actual project. And that, well, first we have to get our data, and that's, and I think I updated this yesterday, but every time I say that, I get some more data. So, oh, I got very little more data. But, you know, they'd make corrections and stuff around the clock, so we might as well pull it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay. Aha! See, there were some errata. And errata is like erotica, except it's wrong, whereas erotica is always right. Okay. So with this data, we do have a um, very nice, I mean, I like it, a uh, little Maxima script here that not only can we load in, but we even have a little pit place that we can just load in the functions we need and then play around with them later. Uh, and we can also clean this up a little bit because um, we no longer need to uh, put in the deaths manually. But there's actually a problem with this, and I'll, I'll show you what that is here in just a sec. All right, so we start this with Maxima 2, I think is the... Okay. And one problem with having freezing and unfreezing a, a virtual machine is it, you never, ever get updates on every time you, every time you start a shell it will run this because I have that in my T shell rec. But because I never start a new shell here that never happens. So we want maxima two la 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 sha na na Okay. Okay. I don't know why I'm getting this stuff, but it is apparently coming in from uh crypt tool, something I don't have control over. So I don't care. So this will give us the number of deaths in the U.S. Uh, per day. 
Um, but you would think that the world would be one of these things, but it is not, unfortunately, because the file I'm using does not include, does not total world deaths. Now, in theory, I could try totaling all the different countries' deaths to get world deaths, but because there, there might be some overlap, I mean, that, that's, that's not really a good way to do it. Um, there is a file that does have world deaths, and um, I like saying the word deaths, 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 deaths. Okay. Um, and we're going to try to load it without spending too much time. Uh, we will succeed in loading it. Oh, changed on disk. It's tiny. Um, uh, we will we will probably end up getting the data, but we will end up spending more time than is necessary because that's the way we roll, man. Um, okay, so let's take a look here. Oh, every time I remount, keeping your home directory on a mount <laughs> is not a good idea in general, but this is just for you guys and you guys, yeah, whatever. All right, let's take a look here. So, um... Countries, I think countries aggregated is what we're using right now, but I'm probably, no, we are, okay, cool. Um, worldwide aggregated, but you'll notice it's a very small file, and there's, no, there's another problem with it. Uh, it's in a different format than the, uh, than the file that we have for uh, COVID data, for the countries aggregated data. Um, but we should be able to include this in, and this should go all the way up to yesterday. So let's see. Um, okay. Alright, um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do basically the same thing. Um, we can even reuse F name because we, we, we closed it up above there. And but the problem is going to be we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, different work to get this data into the format we want. Worldwide aggregated. And we'll call this map two because we we do use map below, and we do need to um, we do need to keep that preserved for for the functions down here that use them. So let's do this and see what map two ends up being. Uh, probably you yeah, know oh shiny. Um, that's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. Okay. All right. So how do we get the data we want out of this? Um, Got to be a little bit careful here. So this makes the death array empty for each country, but I think for this one we can just do... Uh, let's see. What are we doing? I, I don't know. Um, yeah, it appears we're going to use list a string of... All right, so I think what we can do here is make list mat2 no. Make list. Oh, this is actually where we assign it down here. Uh, and this is ugly, but I think we can do. Th okay, well let's let's take a look real, real quick here. All right. Uh, so this is uh, mat two. I think each row is. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's the, the header row. Um, so we could do it. We could do a make list of this and just take the. Um, which element am I looking for? The last, next last element? You can't do minus one like Mathematica lets you do, so it's, you kind of have to cheat a little bit. So the first element is the whole date, two, three, four. So let's see what this does. Yeah. So we just need the fourth element of each element, and that is our list. I think we can do that without having to be make list mat i of four where i goes from 1 to length mat 2. I don't think this is going to work. Well, actually, it might. Yep. Um, so, much, so this is, for some reason, trying to evaluate i before we go through the little loop variable here. Uh, okay, let's take a look at what we've already done this, so let's take a look at that. Um, Oh, can we actually... Okay, so this just goes through uh, all of the... Um... Wait, what the hell? Oh, Matt 2, I'm sorry. Um, wait, was that, was that the mistake there? No, okay. Um, okay, so this goes through Matt 2, and now can we do... 
Uh, it is Pomodoro time. It's the first one, so I'm going to skip it. Um, and I've got a few other pop-ups to deal with, and I don't mean boners. Okay. All right, so this gives me this. Let's see if I can just do I of 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, that is really nice. Um, and the only reason I need to list a string here is because I do not want... Wait. No, I don't, definitely don't want that. Um, the deaths there could be zero, or I could actually just drop it, couldn't I? Um, BC list to string. Uh, oh, 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 that's something totally different there. Okay. Uh, now, I mean, the, the issue here is there's a bajillion ways to do this, including just dropping the first element. Um, I'm trying to be more clever and select if it's not, you know, select if it's a number, basically. Um, so let's see if I can be really super clever here with select, which isn't a function. Um, let's see what I do. There, there's a function like select that basically tells you, um, that gives you a portion of a list that meets a certain condition. Uh, I don't remember what it is, though. Uh. By the way, transpose mat, I, uh, on any normal system, transpose mat to, um, and then taking the second element of that would give me what I want. But for some reason, transpose doesn't do what it does, at least for me, most of the time. All right, plot, oh, 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 okay. There is actually a page that does a Mathematica to Maxima conversions. Uh, maybe I'll find it and, and bookmark it. Maxima versus um, to Mathematica conversion. Um, there was a... T <laughs> wow! This is amazing. So Stephen Stephen Wolfram, let's see what he has to say about this because he's he is the owner. He built Mathematica. Um, the day Mathematica was launched, Happy Mathematica Day. Um, and I guess this was written. Oh, on, you know, okay. So this it's actually now older than that. It's thirty two years old. It's old enough to date, and I'm going to ask it out. Um, oh. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Max and Unix back in the day. Um, okay. Come on, talk about Maxima. Say why it's better. ARPANET, by the way. And I don't know if he's going to mention FidoNet here, but whenever you mention FidoNet, you have to say ARF ARF. I, I don't think it's going to be in here, though. FidoNet is a look like a subnet. Um, ARPANET was, yeah, kind of the internet. God, oh, I have to, I want to bookmark this and I want to save this page. Um, I want to save this page. This is, this is gold here. Um, oh man, I'm in love. Not even with Stephen Wolfram, just with this this mathematics that's going on here. Uh, let's see. By the way, SMP has a different meaning now if you're a network person. Um, or is that SNMP? Anyway, probably has a different meaning anyway. This was probably... Oh, my God. Um... Oh, I, I want this. This is wow. This I remember ads like this. I don't know if I saw this particular one, but this is back in the day when people actually used. God damn it. Um, this is back in the day when people actually had read paper magazines because we didn't really have the internet. I mean, we did, but we didn't. Um. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember ads in like astronomy magazines and stuff that looked just like that, and you could even like circle which things you were interested in. So you just send in one piece of sheet, and they give you the, you get back stuff in the mail in the in what the, in the actual postal mail. 
Um, damn. He was like effing good looking back then. And he's really old now. He's actually probably streaming at this exact instant. Um, um, what kind of ice cream? Oh, that kind. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's gorgeous. It is so beautiful. The rocker, oh, the Ackerman function. Yeah, I know what that is. This is, by the way, how people used to print things in the olden days. We had this, like, uh, fanfold printer paper, and we had this very kind of generic font that is, I think, um, is it? It's monospaced, I think. But this is, this is, this is very nostalgic for me, because uh, I do remember these days. Um, and I do have a copy of the Mathematica book, but anyone can get that. But I have a fairly old one. Okay, now what the hell? Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is back before we ran out of IP addresses. We didn't even have, we didn't even need IP addresses back then. We just had everything just got their own. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Okay, this is where we break with Stephen Wolfram. I was 20 years old. I had just gotten my PhD in physics. I was spending a few weeks at CERN, which is the very impressive uh, laboratory in Switzerland. Oh, okay, now you're kind of smacking around math Maxim a little bit there. Um... So by the way, the if you're wondering where our distraction was, we're trying to find out what the um, the maxima equivalent of select is, meaning choose a portion of a list, meaning a condition, meaning a condition, and even that's just because I'm being too um, too proper to just d drop the first element, which would work just as well for this case. Okay, God, that was beautiful. Okay, I thought I already actually had one, so let me see if I can find a bookmark. Uh, which I cannot. Um, convert Mathematica to Maxima. Someone actually had a page that does a whole bunch of these things. Uh, and it was a Git page, so what did I type in? Oh, covert. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's nothing secret about it. Um, okay. Someone actually did a Git on this. It's a very minimal kind of... Oh, here we are. Um, yeah, here it is. Rosetta was the keyword here. I think... Rosetta, of course, being the Rosetta Stone, which is very famously... Okay, that's not helpful. Ooh. This is not exactly what I wanted. I mean, it would look better in tech form, but let's go ahead and... Uh, Let's go ahead and save this before I forget about it. Um, okay, Th I think maybe they have this in a... Um, okay, maybe we can go one level higher. Um, a free open source, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what the hell, why am I not using it? Because it probably, because it sucks. Um, or they've given up on it, which would mean it also sucks for a different reason. Let's see if we can find it, but this is not what I'm looking for. I'm actually looking for the Rosetta code that converts. God, I'm lazy. Um, and that is a much better search, actually. This guy's ugly. Rosetta Maxima Mathematica. I think that should be enough. Yes, here we are. Oh, shit, it's a PDF. I want to see it. Nope. I hate... I hate... Um, I hate PDFs enough that I will actually actively avoid them. Yo, mama! Oh, crap, is it in French? I hate the French, too. Oh, no, here we go. 
This is probably the correct, correctly formatted version of what we saw earlier. Uh, blah, 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 okay. Hey, 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 hey where's select, you piece of shit? This is too simple. Mm, no, we need more. This is insufficient. Um, system programming and miscellaneous screw it. Garbage, garbage, garbage. Oh, hang on. No, no, no. This is good. This is good stuff. Uh, comments. This is good stuff. I mean, this is this is what I need, but I need it for a little bit more than this. Display set equation prepend append matrix column. This is probably the weirdest, I guess, Max, yeah. This is one of the weirdest decisions Maxon has made, is to use the colon for the assignment without, I mean, usually people use colon equal, or just equal, but just colon by itself is weird. Return unevaluated symbol. Apply a function to a list, pattern matching. Define a new infix, main expression, print text, generate... That's apparently a function a lot of them have. Generate Fortran. Um, export to space. Okay, no. Graphics. Uh, Euler's... Whoa, wait, wait, wait. That is Euler's constant. Piece of crap. Legendre polynomial. Blah, 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 blah. So this is not... I'm looking for more manipulation with lists. This is going to be... Um, not what I want. Okay. So now that we've gone through all of that crap, waste of time, which is what I want, we're going to go look at the list functions. We're not even going to, even here, not going to search. We're going to actually look at them one at a time, because I like looking at them. Uh, that's just the creation operator, append, associate, cons, cutter. They don't have cutter, actually. Create list, delete. I could use delete here, uh, but I'm trying to be a little bit more generic. A this is who the hell thought of these stupid ones? This is the kind of thing that needs to be removed from the. Maybe I'll edit the documentation at some point. End cons fifth first. First n is a useful function. Fourth join. Last last n. Length list arithmetic. I think that's actually a setting. List p list reduce make list member. Pop, push, uh, remainder, rest, reverse, R, reduce, nope, second, seventh, sixth, sort, nope, still not there, sublist, um, and now how do I, I guess this is going to be a lambda function, um, I doubt I this is going to work. Yeah. Oh. One argument. If this works, I'll be fucking surprised. That was kind of awesome. Um, all right. All right, so we've read in Matt 2, and I think what we want here is... Yeah, I think this is just directly from Matrix 2. By the way, functional programmers love to do crap like this, where we find a way of combining functions to do what we want, and then we just put it in there like we didn't go through all that work. It's like, we, well, we just thought of it this way. We didn't. We went through it one step at a time until we found the correct function. Um, so now I should be able to do deaths o world. And that's the equal sign here. And now I should be able to do this. And now I should watch it fail. Hmm. Oh, I think it's because I actually end up uh, reversing all of the d other deaths lists. So... HA! In your face. In my face. Um, there we are. And we can plot these as points, uh, which is not very exciting, but we'll do it. 
Um, is it plot 2D? No, it's, I think, draw 2D. What's interesting here is this actually looks pretty linear at this, you know, I mean, it started off exponential, but this looks pretty linear here. Uh, so, uh, lots of dead people. Uh, we will do a linear regression on this in just a sec. Um, we can also plot this with actual, um, uh, with actual lines between the points like this, I think. Oh, hang on. And this and that. There we go. Yeah. And there it is. And we could even, if you want, um, if you want, we can even log plot this by doing, I don't know why I'm saying you, I mean, log y, and I think all that, that's all you need to do, yeah. And there, there's the lovely coronavirus. Uh, you know, sort of, it looks like it's going to peak out here, but that's, that's, that's what we're here to look at. So this is the, um, this is the very preliminary stuff now that we're done with the formulas. Well, first of all, we're going to get rid of this because we're not using this. We're going to... We're going to get rid of this too. I mean, differences, deaths is good, but we probably don't need it anymore. Days we already made. Uh, this is how to plot some stuff. So, I'm going to start doing stuff like this. Uh, so basically, it's just it doesn't really make things any clearer, but at least shows where I'm doing the new work. Okay. Um, so the first thing we want to do here is um, let's linear plot this data. Let's find the best fit linear function uh, to this data. And that should not be too difficult. If we use, here it is, L square estimates. Uh, least square, that's least squares, by the way. Um, and we will follow the procedure of using really stupid variable names because I don't know which ones I want to use yet. Um, oh, hang on. Okay. So L squares estimates of. Yeah, hang on one second here. I think to use L squares estimates, uh, you need to use a. Um, you need to use something that looks like a list of lists where each element um, each element is a two element list and I'm pretty sure this is not gonna do it um, let me try it I mean I don't know why I keep saying let me try because I know it's not gonna work uh, yeah. At the very least, I know we need, um, actually, this is not going to work. I'm just doing it because I like wasting your time, and I like wasting my time. The variables will be, I can't say D and D for both, so let's say X and Y, and we'll say Y equals A times X plus B, and the variables we want out of this are B. Uh, so this will fail. Let's watch it fail. Well, let, let me do my fail. Let me do my fail. Um, wrong number of indices found. Yeah. Because uh, days.death doesn't look like what I need it to look like. It It's sort of the, I don't even think the transpose of this is going to be correct. Oh, that's a bigger problem. Of course, I meant to say deaths of world. It's still not going to work. But... Uh, yeah. And let me do this, and I'll show you why it's still not going to work, because this is this. Now, if I transpose it, in theory, I should get what I want, but it, for some reason, transpose has a different meaning here. Um, yeah, that's not what I would call the transpose of that. Okay, but we can very easily create a, uh, a list we need which we will call T1219, because that happens to be the time right now. Make list um, days of I, deaths world of I. And I will go from one to the length of, I guess, it doesn't really matter as long as it's consistent. And I think that is the list I will be able to use. 
Yep, that's what I need. Pomodoro time, this time I will take it back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. Okay, so I'm pretty sure this is going to be what I need. Um, hopefully it's what I need, because if it's not, I'm screwed. Ooh. Um, wait, did I actually sign that? I sign that. Okay. Uh, wrong number of indices. That's a. Uh, I might be off by one flatten. No, that seems correct. Do I need to matrix make this a matrix? I don't think so. All right, hang on. Now, one of the bad things is because I've changed so much stuff. Something that was working here below um, isn't going to work anymore because I've changed the definition of so much stuff. That's really bad of me. That's not something I should be doing. Um, okay, did I screw up my A and B somehow? No, that looks fine. Okay, well, when in doubt, just create your own lists. I think I need at least three elements for a... Well, actually, maybe I don't. Um, X and Y are going to be my variables. And this should... I mean, if this works and the other thing doesn't, I'll be surprised. Okay. Wrong number of indices found 1-1. One, one. And I'm... I mean, I can't possibly take this out of this. Uh. All right, let me... If this works, I'll be very surprised. Because that's just really, literally doing nothing. Um. Yep. Matrix just literally just makes it a matrix without changing it in any way. Just like uh, coercing, not coercing, yeah, it is coercing, um, yep. Wait. Okay. Wait a minute, okay, this might actually not work either. I think this might be the wrong, the wrong kind of matrix, but let's find out. Okay, so T1219 is my matrix, and I think, yeah, I think these need to be rows, not columns. Um, so 
So ironically, you know, ironically, I think this as a matrix is what I need. Um, hello, Natalie. Hello, I am up to uh, the COVID virus. I am looking at mathematical models that fit the existing data for COVID without in any way um, being useful to anybody else. And we're going to look at both the exponential and linear. And then we're going to look at true exponential, not um, log fitting. Um, but what do you want to do? You tell me, or if you want to join me on the Discord chat, let me know, uh, Discord audio. Uh, we can get you in here and we can talk about stuff. Um, okay. So. Okay, now, I, now I'm, I'm certainly hoping those are two separate s activities that you need to do. I mean, P clean and write a job app. Now, okay, I'm certainly hoping that you're not going to try cleaning stuff with P, even though urine, I don't think urine is sterile. It, may, it might be actually. Uh, but despite that, you usually don't want to use P to clean stuff with, although for all I know, P will kill the COVID virus, except, of course, viruses can't die because they're not living things. But who knows? Maybe maybe we'll find out that your P is the, uh, your P is the key. Okay, it's not, urine is not sterile. So that is coming from our biologist. That is probably a myth. Let us go ahead and fix that myth by spending a little bit more time showing that it is not, it is not true. That's like the first thing that comes up, too. Uh, oh, well, the very, very first thing that says here is it is sterile. Uh, well, according to this, it is. According to The Guardian, which is a, a notable, uh, oh, okay, this is the, um, this is the NIH. We can, we can, I mean, I don't know why we trust our government, but um, in the adult female bladder. So, like, this is specific to you. Um, so maybe this is something, you could in theory do this, right? You could in theory, because uh, I know you scrape DNA from things, but you, in theory you could enhance, scrape and enhance DNA from your own pee, and then we could see what kind of organisms live in your pee. And according to this, apparently, um, there are germs in, in, in P. There are, although the fact that um, this is kind of bad that the very first, The Guardian is an important paper. Um, um, okay, urea. Ooh. Okay, yeah, I've, I haven't heard that, actually. Um, but we already know what you eat. What I want to know is what bladder infections you have, and the reason for that is, if, if anyone on the stream doesn't remember, I'm hoping at one point to have a short-lived relationship with Natalie. It's still quite a ways off, because she has a boyfriend currently, and there's at least one other person in the queue after me, and there might be two other people in the queue after me. Uh, plus, I'm pretty old, so I might be dead by then. Um, but if we do end up having a relationship, um, I think Isooptilator was in it at one point. Um, uh, Milkis Dermu is definitely the very heavy contender there for first, after the current boyfriend, whose name is T-Torp. Is T-Torp really your boyfriend, or were you just saying that to be funny? Because T-Torp is actually also a streamer, and he's actually your mod, and he's actually might even be here, for all I know. He's been on the, my stream before, so quite, quite, quite a, uh, quite a long, t you know. And I'm not saying you have to get your bladder disinfected, whatever the hell that means. I'm just kind of curious um, as to what, what, and they call it flora, even because at one point bacteria were considered flower, uh, were considered plant life, but they're not anymore. They're they have their own kingdom now, the kingdom of bacteria. Uh, so it'd just be kind of cool to know, you know, get get to know the bacteria in your urine. That could be like a, that could be like a, a talk that you could give. 
getting to know the bacteria in your urine. And then just as a, as a visual aid, you could bring like a sample of piss and just put it on the counter and say, this is my piss. Now let's see what's in it. Um, boy, that degenerated quickly. Whoa, what's wrong? What's wrong? You're the one who brought it up. I mean, you could have just said, I need to clean or I need, I have other things to do. But you very specifically mentioned peeing and cleaning and writing a job application. Now, as a guy, I could write a job application in the snow uh, with pee. I don't know how you plan to write a job application with pee. I mean, you could just pee into a jar and then, you know, use a paintbrush and use your pee to write the job. I don't know if people want necessarily a pee written job application. I don't, um, I don't know if that, I mean, it, it could be if it's actually like a, uh, it, it's like, um, you know, maybe if you're applying to a, a laboratory or something, they might, you, know, you might just say, well, if you need a pee sample, this application is written in pee. So, you know, right there, you got your drug test out of the way right there. Because I'm that confident that I can write this application in pee. Um, so lots of discussion about pee here. Uh, the urine, um, bladders, kidneys. Kidneys are, of course, what filter. They're part of the nephretic system. And that ha that's a dumb name because it sounds like that's what your nephew would do. It's like your nephew doesn't show up and filter. I mean, unless you're, you're in a very strange family, your nephew probably doesn't come around filtering your urine. Um, and if you're in a slightly less strange family, your nephew probably does filter some other stuff, but that's disgusting, and we won't discuss it here. Okay. All right, if you have other comments or questions, Natalie, let me know. Otherwise, I will get back to um, whatever the hell I was doing before I started discussing P. Um, and if anyone else in chat wants to say anything, please go right ahead. Okay. So I think this is what I need. Let me see if I can cheat a little bit by using the percentage sign. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Okay, so now I need to figure out what the hell... Okay... Oh! Okay, I know what's wrong there. I need one level of flattening. <coughs> Excuse me. Can I just do this with create a matrix like this? I shouldn't be able okay. Um COVID. COVID, which sounds like again, it's not as good as coed vid nineteen, which is a bunch of nineteen year old coeds. Okay, so this is I'm pretty sure this is still wrong. All right, so let's do this, and let's... It's not going to work. This is... That's clearly not the right thing. The fact that it accepted it is kind of weird. Okay... This might be one of the cases where transpose does what I need it to do. Oh, that looks pretty damn solid. There we go. So this and then, I don't want to give away the secret, but yeah. Okay. So it is going to be, it's going to be finding out where the hell my Emacs is. Never where you expect it to be, which is kind of weird. Okay. Um, I don't want it here, though. I don't want my Max here. We need some rounds. Okay. Alright, here we go. And really, the way to do it is to do this little fan fold thing, but even then, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Okay, so what we want here is da -da -da -da, what we had here. Um, transpose matrix days death world. 
that just gets it in the right format. I think at one point I looked into finding a more efficient way of doing this, uh, switching between windows. Alt-Tab does not work. Uh, Alt-Escape probably doesn't work either. Control-Tab, because a lot of these are being intercepted by, because this is a VM. Uh, command key tab, nope, 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 nope. Uh, so FVWM does have, like, some nice shortcuts. Um, but I don't think I can use them here. I mean, I could, but it would require more work. And, don't want to do that. Okay, this is, this is looking pretty good. And now, I think we already kind of gave away the secret here, but... Okay. And this isn't actually super useful, so I'm going to go ahead and convert it to floating point. Um, so according to this, we start with negative 36,000 deaths, and we're adding about 1454 deaths per day. There's a reason for this, and we will, um, let's see. We now need to convert this into the function w which we wanted here. Um, and then when we, pl well, see, the problem is that the linear growth has changed a lot. And we, we can fix that. Um, but okay, let's go ahead and convert this into a function, in other words. And I think that's just subst. Um, i got to be a little bit careful. Let's go ahead and call this T1236 because I want to use it as a substitutional uh, into a times x plus b. And I think that's still going to give me a problem, but let's, let's figure that out real quick. Okay. But I think T1237 is not a function. It's actually something else. So if I do 8, it's not going to give me what I want. Yeah, it's not a function. There's a way to fix that. Uh, and I did it earlier, so it shouldn't be too tough. Oh, yeah, I can just do this. Um, and here, because it's a function, I can do set equal. And we can, we can um, I was going to say normalize. We can actually generalize this a little bit in, in, a, in a little bit. Okay. Okay, now T1237 of 8 should give me a number. And now let's go ahead and create a list out of this. Um, uh, T1237 evaluated at I, where I goes from 1 to the length of days, because that's the... Uh, so this will give us the pointwise estimates. Um, I'm really tempted to convert to float here. But we don't have to, though. And then, if I'm doing this correctly, discrete. And inside of here, I can put um, days. I should be able to put two different lists. And I should get the plot of them both, uh, one against the other. And that is a, that's a lot to ask for. So it probably won't work. Uh, okay, days. No, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Can't do that. Um, unless that, if this works, I'll be surprised and kind of annoyed, actually. Yeah, okay, good. Um, all right. So there should be a way to do this. Um, ooh, unless. Oh, hang on. We might just create two separate plots and combine them. I don't know if that's going to work. But first, let's take a look at the real data, which we've already looked at, so it's not very exciting. Whoa! Okay, end deaths. It's not on the list anymore. End that there. Damn it. Okay. Now, I think if I assign it to a variable, um, the problem is I think this is still going to end up printing it. There's a way to suppress that, but we'll do that in a minute. Um, and here, instead of that, we just want um, T1238 and do that. 
Uh, okay, Pomodoro time. Back in two and two. And we are almost back. And I'm gonna mute you guys for just a second. Um, either that or you're gonna hear me blowing my nose, but I think I can mute you. Be muted. Let there be sound. Okay. And we're back. Okay. Um, so my goal here is to see if I can perform... Uh, here's to what the hell I'm doing. Not, not really that good. Uh, where did I... Did I just delete a big chunk of data by mistake? Or did I just... Whoa. Wow, I did. And now I can just bring it back, though. Okay, so I'm going to try to give these two plots names. Uh, this is the, obviously the straight line data. Um, and then... Can I just combine them? Does it show? I get the feeling I'm doing this wrong. Um... Okay, I get the feeling that, so this doesn't even actually keep the, um, this doesn't even actually plot by itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and look back at the wonderful and always useful manual. Uh, graphics, or plotting, I guess. Um, blah, 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 who gives a fuck? Um, hmm. Now I'm wondering if I have... I don't know if I have X max. Oh, I do have X maxima. That's not what I want. That's not what I want at all. Be gone from this place. Okay. But can I set my plotting to X maxima? Oh. Geom view. I think I do have that, actually. When I say I think I have that, I mean I don't have that. Okay. We'll keep going with the new plot for now. Contour plot, which is nice. Uh, geom view command. <laughs> Get plot option, new plot command. That's very directly going to new plot. Implicit plot. Oh, that's actually nice. I think, but I would call that a parametric plot. But same thing. Uh, Julius, I don't see. This is where you get the feeling that these guys are are uh, are posing. Uh, because really, Julia is not a very basic, um, or ne neither is Mandelbrot. They look nice, though. Polar to XY. No, plot 2D. Here we go. Um, okay. So, plot 2D can be called with multiple plot things, but... 
Uh, but these things aren't even plots anymore. So would it be... Oh, that can't be right. So let me try plot 2D. <sighs> this is going to not work. Nil cannot be used as a local variable. What, what is T1239? Okay. Okay. It's the same thing. Okay, so something is wrong here. I can't... Um, if I try to assign something to a plot, what happens? It, it gets plotted. Um, but... I get the feeling... Anyway, that's clearly not the right way to do it. So we probably need to look at this manual some more. Um, now, Mathematica, uh, sorry, Mathematica, this thing I think has a read view, which means we get rid of this sort of ugly space to the left that's not helping us any, um, except it doesn't, so screw, screw that. Okay. Um... Okay, discrete x1, y1. Uh, okay, so we can have collections of these suckers. So I should be able to do discrete. I gotta be careful here. So it's x1, y1. So this would be days, um, deaths of world. And okay, that should work, but it's not what I want. Okay, no. So discrete x one y one, and this is just a one. piece of shit. Yes, they do. <coughs> okay. So it's going to be discrete double thingy. X1, Y1. All right. Um, comma, X2, Y2. Oh, shit. Did I forget the most important thing at the very end, which is... Um, no. No. X1, Y1. X2, Y2, which is um, the thingy I created. T1238. Okay, wait. So the second thing is a list, then we end this, then we do this. None of the points have numerical values. And you're clearly lying. So let's do this with just the way we normally do it, which is um, like this. Okay, hang on. Close this, close this. Okay, there we go. That works. Okay, so now you're saying that instead of after discrete, instead of putting in a single x and y coordinate, I can do... Oh, but that should work too. So I can do multiple X's and then multiple Y's. That's... Oh, these might be points, not, not actual lists. Right, so this is actually a single list that's being plotted. So my bad. Uh, we need a list of lists. One or more expressions, okay. Uh, can be displayed in the parametric form. Range. There are several plots to be plotted. Um, okay, let's see if we can get an example of 
a plot of multiple things at the same time. That's nice, but it's not... Okay. Aha! Here we go. Um... Plot 2D. Okay, so that's got to be... Maybe that doesn't work for multiple lists. Oh, unless each list is itself. Okay, hang on. So that's one plot. The second plot could be... <sighs> okay. And I think if I put this whole thing in one big list, nothing will happen. <whistles> I'm wrong. Something did happen. Okay. So now we could... Let me freaking put that down before I forget it. That's the... That is the bomb. Nope, not that. And that probably belongs in our freeform notes. Oh, so I already had that in our freeform notes, which tells me I should probably be paying more attention to our freeform notes. So I just wasted some extra time there. <coughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to put this over here. We want this. I'm going to go ahead and BC get this, and then I'm going to clean it up a little, little bit. Uh, please stand by. Okay. Uh, so we don't need these. We do need... Okay. So looking at this list, we'll see one reason, of course, is because uh, if even if you kind of believe that it's linear, it's really not linear over the whole period of days that we've had. It's sort of become linear uh, after this sort of anti-inflection point. Um, so how do we, I mean, one obvious way we could do this is we could just restrict our linear model to go from 61 days to whatever the, <coughs> I'd covered my, covered my cough, you're fine, to the number of, uh, to the number of days, but let's go ahead and do that, but we want to generalize that concept. We don't want to necessarily, um, we don't want to necessarily use that, uh, long term because we don't want to be eyeballing the answer all the time. So what we're going to do here is um, I think I can do last n on a matrix and get like the last 20 rows. And I can, which is awesome. So we'll just look at the last 20 days, which may not be the correct amount, but that's okay because we're actually going to screw, screw things over here in a minute. Um... Okay. I didn't realize it wasn't that easy. Okay. And, by the way, one thing you're, you might be noticing is we're doing a lot of um, sort of redundant work here by looking at the linear interpolation, creating a list for the linear interpolation, and then plotting it against the actual data. We, we do want to automate some of this. And, in fact, we will automate some of this, and there, there's other things we actually want out of this. Um that we also need to automate. But for right now, uh, let's rock this. Um, I'll square this for me. Okay, so we'll do this. Okay. Really, really tempted to put this into... Um, okay. I think, because of the way I did this, this should just give me the... There we go. Um, it shouldn't have to substitute every time. Okay, so now, now keep in mind, some sweet days. Uh, this might screw things over. Oh, actually, I need uh, one more step here. Uh, I need a list of T1254I 
this is the estimates that it would give. Now, the estimates are going to be really, really bad for the early days, but that's okay. We kind of expect that. Um, so let's look at that in floating point. Yeah, and because we're going to have a much steeper curve, uh, and it's going to be more accurate later on, uh, we're going to ignore the... It's going to be really bad estimates early on. And now we should be able to do... So let's move this down here a little bit. <laughs> and this should be a much better estimate for the, the period of time we're looking at. I think I screwed something up. T1254. Oh. Yeah. Wrong list. Wrong formula. Which is one reason we, we kind of want to normalize this. Generalize this. Okay. Kind of sucky here, but we can get around that by... One way to get around it is by doing this. And we can see here that this is actually not a bad estimate starting, as we, we said, in the last 20 days. Yeah, this is not a, a hugely bad estimate uh, for the last 20 days. And... T1254 of X. I want to I want to see what what this actually is saying. Um, so this is saying about 6,679 deaths per day, but it's only estimates for the last last few days. Um, before we go to the other kind of estimate, we, before we go to the uh, more generalized version of this, where we can get um, estimates for any given period of time and then try to find where the best fit linear estimate is uh, for how many days back can we go and still have a really good linear estimate by using uh, least squares differencing um, among multiple least squared. Um, but first, the other way to look at this data is to look at it as being, um, as being exponential. So over here, we will do the exponential stuff. I don't think this is going to work, actually. But, hey! I don't care. So here we're going to say that um, y is going to be exponential of a times x plus b. And this is going to break, but only because of the overflow errors. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, even though, let's see, I mean, even though really this should not be hideous, I mean, it, it is what it is, um, it really didn't like, I, why doesn't it like that, though? Yeah, um... Yeah, this is... I'm actually kind of curious. I haven't thought about it, but... Can we fit the last, let, let's say, 20 days worth of data, even if we can't fit all the data? No. Is it just because we're choosing initial values of A that are too... too big? Um... I mean, the initial values it's choosing for f and g, which I don't know what they are, uh, is very huge. So maybe we can tweak this to choose much, much lower values for y, for e a and b. Okay. Let me just see if we can do it with, like, the last 10 days worth of data. Wow, they just, they just do not like that. Okay. All right, so let's take a better look at this uh, L squares estimates function. And see if we can hint, give it a little bit of a hint um, after spelling it correctly. Okay, it's gonna. It is Pomodoro time. I am gonna do this one. I'll be back in two and two.
Hello, Milkus Gramu. We are almost back. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Okay. This is freaking amazing. Um, sorry, Milkus Gramu. I just got distracted by an email. Thank you for saying the word Pomodoro. I just got an email from NASA asking me to review the performance of two of their employees. Um, just That is just effing bizarre. But I will definitely give them very positive reviews because uh, they have been super helpful. Okay. Uh, yeah, from NASA. But it turns out it's not as exciting as it sounds. Let me read out part of it. Uh, Barry, it's that time of year at JPL when we conduct the annual salary review. Towards the end, one thing supervisors, that's me, and this is Chuck Acton, by the way, um, do is solicit comments from folks with whom my employees have had interacted uh, to get a sense of how well these interactions went and if the person has any suggestions about how the NAIF team member might improve hi her his interactions. I wonder if you have any comments on Ed Wright and or Nat Bachman with regard to the discussions of them on... Um, Oh, wow, then they actually quoted the titles of my emails, Spice Double, Docker for TC Spice, and Lunar Eclipse Calculations. Uh, any comments you c would provide, positive, negative, would be held strictly confidential. I would need any such feedback no later than May 1st to be useful in the review process. There you have it. Um, again, so it's not really that exciting because they, they would just contact anybody. But again, Nat Bachman, I'm going to say it on record, is very, very helpful, um, insanely helpful. Uh, I do deserve that. And actually, more importantly, I think, um, Nat Bachman uh, deserves credit for this because he has been really super helpful. I don't know who the other guy is. I assume he's, he's important, but... Um, oh, actually, no. Apparently, Ed Wright talked to me about Sea Spice, Docker for Sea Spice in July. Um, I need to look at that because I don't remember. I mean, I, I, I shouldn't say I don't remember that because um, the attempt was to create a Docker container that would um, run C-Spice by itself. I think I might have actually done it. Um, and and the, the big problem was how big it would be because of we, the ephemerides that it needs. But um, so again, it's not nothing I actually earned. It just surprised me that I'm being asked I mean, in a way, you know, I am a taxpayer. Well, I was a taxpayer, um, and and I guess that is that is cool. But I definitely definitely want to answer that. I'm gonna mark that super important here. Um, um, and I think if when I do that, I'm gonna have to. Th he only mentioned three interactions, but there's really a lot more. Because um, Nat has really helped me with a lot of other stuff, including the. Um, oh, is that what lunar eclipses means here? Yes, okay, lunar eclipse calculations is actually not our moon, it's the moons of Jupiter being eclipsed uh, by Jupiter itself. Um, and we we went through, there's some real bizarre stuff that goes on if you want to be accurate about it, because the moons of Jupiter uh, and Jupiter itself are not perfect spheres, they're ellipsoids. But anyway, that excited me so much, it... Uh, it distracted me from what I was doing, which is trying to find a least squares estimate for the best fit exponential function for the number of COVID deaths in the world. Okay. The data must be a matrix. Um, let's see. Interestingly, I could use approximate, but I'm trying to see if we could give initial values that will be interest initial values that'll be useful uh, so let's take a look here mm, tell me how to use the initial values um, okay come on this is this isn't documented initial equals well, let me try a couple of things here. First of all, I'm going to try L squares estimates approximate, which probably won't work either. Variable list must only comprise 
only atoms and assignment functions found a comma b uh wow so does it have a different format for that i mean i thought it'd be the exact same format but apparently they're not consistent so let's see what we need for this is exact um oh Oh, you have to actually give it the formula that you're trying to minimize. You don't give it the matrix. You don't. This is very different. Um, let's see. Oh wait, what is this? Oh, this is actually good. This returns the mean square error. Um, for something, so going back to going back to one where I actually have a have a working example uh, for linear uh, for linear fitting. Back well, I don't even need to do that again, do I? So that that's now. Let's see if I can get this is actually really useful. L squares MSE um, with the same data. Uh, let's see. Almost the same day. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. They want D, X, and E. Yep, this is what it's defined as, all right. The mean square estimate error. Mean square error. I was going to say average, but okay. For the equation E in the variables X. Oh, so I cannot, so this I have to feed it an actual function. Um, okay, so I can't quite feed it my data and it, it won't go through the whole process for me. I still need to give it, well, my data, which is this, the function, which is T1237 of X, where the variable is X. Or not that. Uh, for oh, I flipped them. Hmm. Argument cannot be a symbol. Sure. Does it need to be a list? Uh, for the expression E in the variables. Okay, that doesn't work. That's interesting, though. So what do you expect for T1219? Oh, with data D. I guess I'm confused here because... My original data, and I want the mean... This, now, T1219 is defined. That should not be a problem. Alrighty. Let's look at something. Oh, do I need to? Um, do I need to load something? No. I mean, it clearly understands the function. It's just not using it. Okay. So M is a matrix. L squares M. Okay. Got my matrix, got my variables. Oh, 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 oh. Do I need to put Y here as a variable? Uh, yeah, for some reason it's not reading T1219 as a, as a matrix at all. Uh, Okay, well, how about that? 
Yeah, it does not like... I mean, T1219 is definitely a matrix. Yeah. Um, <laughs> matrix. Variables. And something that's an equality operator. Oh, actually, hang on. That might be correct, actually. Oh, that is correct. Yeah, because these are subscripts I wasn't seeing. Um, so, T1219, I... Sorry. 3, 2... Yeah. And so, this... Oh, okay, so this actually gives it to me... Why don't you calculate it, you piece of shit? Okay, so this re returns it to me in a really useless... It's technically correct, but it's also you stupid. Okay, so this is what I want. T okay. So this is correct. It is the sum of I from 1 to 91 of these things. Um, but fairly pointless because this is... We need to actually instantiate those variables. Hello, high altitude... Sure... Cherninkoff, are you somebody I know from a different identity? That's true. It is pure. It is pure. It is, you know, you're right, actually. I have strayed from my pure math roots by saying that this is not pure. This is the purest form of this equation. Um, it would be nice, though, to put in numbers so I could get a value for this because some of those pesky uh, applied mathematicians would want to actually know what the MSC is as opposed to the formula for the MSC. But yes, you are correct. This is the pure this is the purest way of doing this. Let me find a slightly less pure way of doing this though that is might be more useful to some people. I know, I know, I know. Real math, you don't use numbers, you just use letters and symbols. And if you're really good, you can just use symbols that are letters. Uh just it's, you know, all of math is symbolic. Uh but again, no, the float function didn't do it, actually. Uh, what the float function did... So this is what it looks like at first, before the float. If you put in the float function, it converts... It converts... It doesn't actually do the sum, is the issue. Uh, it converts all the things to floating point numbers that it can. Um, and I'm wondering if the, like, if just the word sum would do it. Nope. I mean, oh, you know what would do this? Eval. I think eval would do this. No. Cool. There's got to be... Maybe it's ev. I'm just going to randomly pick functions until something works. Nope. Um, all right. Well, let's see, what, let's see what, how they do it here. Or they don't, because the documentation is not that fantastic. Um, nouns might be what I want... I mean, I like how, um, what is that number at the top? When did you float mean? Okay. Gonna have to explain that a little bit. So what this is, is the functional definition of, this is the expression that gives me when you did float, oh, so this is right here. This is the uh, this is what you do if you don't put float. So I'm going to put float in front of the whole. Actually, I can just do this. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, holy crap! I didn't notice that. You are correct, sir. So why the hell does it return the whole sum to me again? All right, hang on, hang on. So this definitely is not returning a number that I can use. This is returning a number I can use, and for some reason it returns something else. So now, just to remain cognizant, 
Let's see what this actually assigns T1316 to. I guess, but what is if I do an assignment, what's going to be assigned to? Okay, so now tell me what T1316 is. Motherfucker! Okay, it's not a list. It's, it's actually really, really small. In fact, it is... I think it's really too small for what I'm looking at. Um, oh, hang on, that might be the... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That, that's actually 1 over 91. Sorry, 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 sorry. That's just the multiplier. Yeah. That's just because in the raw form, so that doesn't work. So I do that. I'll leave this here for right now just so we can play with it, but... Yeah, sorry. So all that did was convert the 1 over 91 into floating point. So this... Shit, let me do that again. So this is over 91. If I do float, it's just going to put that 1 over 91 in front of it. So this is just 1 over 91. Well, fuck, that doesn't help us. So let's go back over here. Um, that's nice. It just <laughs> this is cool. They just do it all symbolically. There's no, no assignment here. Um, wow. I mean, their matrix is also a matrix of, of real numbers. Uh, maybe there's a function after this, L squares MSE residuals. Okay, maybe that's what I need. Although I kind of get the feeling it's going to give me the it's going to be just as stupid as Let's take a look at package L squares. Oh. Um No, that's okay. Um It's good good to look at that stuff. Okay, so this is just really giving us the same estimates exact which actually uses a totally different format, so that's helpful, in the sense of it's not. Okay. Oh, a summation expression. So this is actually supposed to return an expression, not an actual value. That's unhelpful. Um, okay. Um... Okay. Do I do have L squares? Oh, I must have L squares loaded, otherwise this wouldn't be doing anything. So let's look at this one. This could be fun. And I get the feeling the parameters will not be the same because that would be too easy. So the parameters I need for this are the data, which I have. Uh, the variable. Um, X is list of... E is an expression of... Okay. Uh, e is a list of equations which specify values for any free parameters in E aside from X. Really? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and skip Pomodoro this time because I actually have a real person in, in my chat. Um, and I appreciate that. So Nightbot, you will be, you will be ignored. Okay, so getting back to what the hell I'm trying to do, e is an, okay, let's take a look at an example here real quick. Uh, so you have matrix, the variables. Oh, okay, so this actually does the same thing. This actually does the approximation itself. Uh, like, you know, you, you almost get the feeling that somebody... Ooh... The value of A is not of type list. Okay. So maybe I could do this and then have like no variables. There we go. So the residuals look like this. And that is definitely something I want to make a note of. Um, 
actually, let's do this. Okay, so this is the list of residuals with the with A and B filled in. Um, what? I literally just did that. Oh, I literally just did that. Oh, because I was doing a float earlier, that's why. Okay. So this... Okay, that's good. Now, I mean, in theory... Oh, man. I could sum these up. Yes, I am. Very good catch there if you didn't know it earlier. And I'm naming them after the time not in the time zone UTC, which is what I'm using here. But just to be confusing, I'm naming them after the time where I am which is Mountain Daylight Time, which is UTC minus six hours. It is 1.22 and 24 seconds here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, okay. So these are the residuals. Now, in theory, I could just add... Uh, let's, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Are these the residuals squared or the residuals themselves? Ah, uh, mama. I mean, there's actually a really easy way to f figure this out, but... Um. Oh. Oh, oh, these are the residuals directly. They are not even absolute valued. Um, okay, so these are just the re residuals with actual nothingness. So now, I mean, I could sum them, but I would get a sum that's very low because they'll cancel each other out. And I'm pretty sure that there is no... God damn it. That's not going to do what I want. Um... Mathematica has a total function. I don't think... Yeah, it doesn't have one. Um, I think you can do apply plus. And that'll actually do what I want, because it's like a map. But Nope. Um... Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that, that would be very strange. Um, of course, there's still a problem, because if I do this on two separate days at about the same time, I could get conflicting variables, but I normally just do different sections on different days, so it's not, not a huge deal. Plus, eventually I'm going to try to wrap these up into functions. And I know you can't hear me because you just said be right back, but this is for anybody who might be listening outside of you or in YouTube, which never happens either. Okay, so now I could probably square the residuals. Shiny. Um, so these are residual squared. And then I need to divide by n and take the square root. So that's going to be... Oh, no, 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 I can't do that yet. I need to add these up together. Um, okay. I think I did this at one point. Um, and it wasn't it wasn't hard enough that I didn't I didn't need to make a function for it. Uh, least squares for the list of poly. Anytime I do this, there's also the possibility uh, that I could, in theory, just write my own function to do this. Um. Oh, that's PDF. We don't like PDF. Um. The sum function definitely does not, definitely does not do what I want, I think. But let's see if it's helpful. Sum and whoa, shiny. Now that just sums up. Uh, oh, hang on.
So that would be, I can simplify that obviously, but there's that. Okay. So that is the sum of the elements squared. Let's get that here. That's the sum of the residuals squared. Um, and then we need to divide that by length of t, the length of the list. And then if I remember correctly, we really should take the square root. That is, this is the mean squared error. But let me see what the um, thing I don't want, which is this, uh, which is the mean. Okay, this is the mean square. So if I kind of if I want the actual, I mean, I could leave it like this. Um, so I could just leave it like this. This is the so this is the. Um, oh no! Actually, hang on. So we add up the sum of the squares, and then we divide by the length of the list, and we have this, which is this, which I don't, I don't know how helpful that is. Um, I think, I hope float, yeah, there we go. So this probably gives you a better idea of the mean error here is 29,809. Um, so now getting back to the attempt to do this in an uh, exponential way, which has failed miserably, by the way. Yeah, let me see if the problem here is, I don't even think there's any zeros in T1219, so there's no, there's none of this we can't, um, There should be none of this. We can't find. I mean, there's no exponential function that that'll fit perfectly, obviously. But there should be no issue of trying to fit an exponential function to zero. So let's see if we can do this. I don't think this is going to work. Yeah. There, there is a way to give this thing a, a starting value. Um, okay. Initial equals blah, but I don't. I don't think they ever use it. That's literally the only place in the documentation. Oh, okay. So where does... I mean, you don't even use the word initial. I don't know if that's a hard word or that's just a... Um, oh. Well, well, well. That could be very nice. Okay. I mean, x, exponential of x. Oh, shit, hang on. Okay, I can see where that might go wrong. Yeah, I can see where that could go very wrong. the hell? It almost worked. Oh. Hmm. I'm going to write this down because at the very least it gave a result. So keep forgetting hitting return should just do nothing but it doesn't so this kind of did it um uh, now that was going a little bit too far there um, I'm trying to see what the exponential function to this is, but in other words, what the daily percent rate is. Yeah, so this is a 7.4% growth rate, um, which we're probably not seeing anymore. But okay, so I'm still not happy because... Because... 
because it still gave me an error message. And I mean, those are pretty good initial values, right? I mean, e to the 1 is only 2.7. In fact, it might be too low. Um, well, let's see if we can give it a slightly better initial value. Um, let's make it log of 90,000. Wow. Evaluation of gradient at failed. Um, I mean, I mean, I, I'm sure it already floated it, but no. Okay, so this is using a slightly different initial value. Let's see if we got the same thing. Yeah, so okay, so th these values are probably accurate, even though it's giving us errors. I mean, you know, to the extent something can be accurate. Um, okay, so now that we have that, we can now look at the residual. We can now do whatever the hell it is we did for the linear example, and we'll plot it actually, um, like this, if that works. That looks incorrect, because that estimator is not... All right. Got to be careful. I don't want to overwrite existing work. Here we are. Um... Okay. Nope. Okay, where are the... Um... Okay, I guess we need to do the other steps here, too. So this is the estimate, now we need the substitution step. Okay, this is getting a little bit ugly now. Oh no, this is actually fine. This is, f this is for, the, uh, for the linear model. Okay, so now we need the substitution. Oh, this was for the linear model for the last 20 days. So now we're going to do the exponential model. Yay. I'm going to say 1334 of x that equal to substitute t1257 with x a plus a times x plus b. That should actually be fairly simple. So t1334 of x should be, yeah, good stuff. And then we need to make a list that of these values of the estimated values, which is just this. I goes from one to length. We'll call it days because I think it's still in the correct thing. Okay. Okay. It's going to overestimate it first, obviously. Um, and then we need to basically plot the actual data versus our model data, which should be this. That's not actually that bad. Um, clearly our model data, which is discrete too, by the way. Um, wait, is it? Yeah, I think. Yes, no, maybe. Yeah, I think the blue line is the is the first. Yeah, that's fine. So this over predicts here, but actually predicts sort of okay. I shouldn't say predict, fits. Um, now the question is if we use if we use a log plot, what do we see? Interesting. Now this is not the same as minimizing the uh, the distance in the logs. Um, quite a big gap here, uh, but we're, 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 we're plugging away. Okay, so now I said we're not going to make predictions, so we will go ahead and make predictions. Um, we're 91 days in, by the way, and let's also look at, hello, welcome back. 
Uh, let's also look at last death of world. I think I called it death, so let's make sure we get that correct. Okay. So we're not supposed to be making predictions, but if we were... Um, we would be predicting about 14,000 deaths today. Um, but again, exponential growth is not going to continue forever, hopefully. Well, I mean, it can't. At some point, we're gonna, it's going to run out of people. Um, actually, I'm actually not work. I want to be very careful here because I said at the beginning, and I want to say this. I know you weren't there. So that's at, again, I don't believe in predictive statistics. What I'm doing is curve fitting to existing data, and I'm trying to show a ver so I did a linear fit to the existing data, which didn't work. But then I did a linear fit to the last 20 days, uh, which worked better because the data is more. Um, uh, the data. Let me actually let me plot that data for you real quick because it is a good thing to see. Um, oh, it's all every time. Okay. So obviously this is data is not linear, but what if you just went to the last 20 days, which is 71 here, and did linear plot, you got a pretty good approximation. Uh, then I tried to fit an ex exponential data to the whole thing, which we just saw. Um, and then I also talked about you can fit exponentials in two ways. Uh, the way I did it is I actually fit the best, min I minimize the uh, square error, but you could also take the log of both sets of data and minimize the difference in the logs, but that is different, uh, distinctly different from minimizing the uh, error in the data and the error in the log of the data. They're not the same. Um, so I don't think I've actually done a log model yet. I'll go ahead and do that. Um, And that'll be T1338. And this is going to be a different model. Um, I guess if I'm, I'm making... A, and the other thing I was going to do is say, okay, we sort of eyeballed it to say the last 20 days is linear, but we could do a better job than that. We could try to find the least... Of all the lines that go from day N to day 91, linear models, which is the best fit? Which is the one that if we were trying to convince people that we knew what we were doing, which is the line that we would use? We say, well, if you look at the data over the last 53 days, and please don't ask me why I chose 53, you can see that it's a very good linear fit. And we could certainly do that by looking at uh, linear fits for different sections of the data, different subsections of the data. Um, so now this is actually, this one I've done before, and it actually works pretty good. Um, log of y is equal to ax plus b. This actually shows sort of a nice feature of um, of maxima is that you don't have to say y equals something. You can just say this, and I think this this should work. Yeah. Also, I mean that that is correct. I mean that literally is correct. But maybe it would be nice to do this. I'm going to skip Pomodoro this time because we are someone is in the stream. Very nicely. So this would be the uh, the best fit log data. And it predicts a growth rate of, the other one predicted about 7% per day. This predicts 9% per day. Um, so let's go ahead and do the, um, so again, this is the least squares for the log of the data um, as a linear function. Um, and uh, the point I was going to make at one point is this and this will not give you identical results uh, because there's a difference between minimizing the log dif the l difference of the logs and the difference of the actual values. So let's go ahead and call this T1340X set equal to into, and this is again now actually A times X plus B because obviously we're saying Y is equal to this. Okay. And now, you know what, actually I might plot them all against each other. That would be kind of cool. Um, just to see how the different estimates. And I guess if I, if I have a point here, it is really curve fitting does not give you predictive data. Because depending on how you do your curve fitting, you can get all sorts of crazy results that don't agree with each other, but all look pretty good when you look at the original model and say that these are pretty close to the original data. But yet, if you project them into the future, 
the results are wildly different. They're nowhere near the same. Okay, did I, or did I do this? I did. Okay. And then... I guess the coup d'etat here would be to, uh, the coup de gras rather here would be to plot them all against, plot all of them against each other instead of just one at a time. Um, but let's see what this does. Yeah, probably should have turned that off. Um, so again, this is not a bad fit. I mean, well, it's kind of a bad fit here because this is a big difference in real num in the numbers themselves, but if you were to plot this using a log scale, it's not really that big of a difference for that. Um, but that's that's where these models sort of become, you know, uh, very different. And now I guess we will pull off the coup d'état uh, and plot all of them, all of the models, all of the models that I'm using for. Um, for the whole, not 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 models for portions of the days, so. Wait, nope. Okay. Let's see what my other models were. Okay, da 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 da. T twelve thirty eight was one of them. Um, T1255 was one of them, but it only, w well, you know what, let's go ahead and put it in there. Um, T1255 was the best linear fit to the last 20 days, uh, which is, it's a terrible fit for everything else, and it actually will throw off the plot a little bit, but we can fix that. And then we have the true exponential fit. Uh, you know what, I don't like this one. Sorry, we're going to get rid of it. And then we're going to have the log, ex the best fit to the logs. Um, oh, I guess we already had that one. So I think I'm off by something here, but let me let me double check this. Plot 2D. T1238 is in there. T1255 is not in there, but it, oh, it shouldn't be because that's one I'm skipping. T1335 and T3. Okay, so these are the three models. Linear, best fit exponential, and best fit log linear. And they should all be different, unless I screwed something up. Um, yeah, the linear model has real trouble here because this is not a linear, linear data set. Um, actually, let me go ahead and put in the, uh, the one that's the last 20 days, which looks a lot better. A logistic curve. Okay, by a logistic, oh, actually, I don't know what a logistic curve is. I'll admit that right up front. But if you mean um, the differential equation curve uh, that shows that the number of new infections is proportional to the number of existing infections, but minus a factor to compensate for the fact that many people have already been infected. Uh, but if that's not what you meant, tell me what you meant because that sounds interesting. Um, and until that, we're going to look at the um, the the model that that looks a lot better because it uses less less time. And here I'm going to go ahead and. Not do that. Um, God damn it. Um, okay. I mean, I could use an interpolation curve, but that's just cube explaining. That's not, does, that doesn't even attempt to be predictive. Um, I did find that if you use a fifth degree polynomial, you can fit the data really well. Um, but again, it's garbage because it predicts m really high values afterwards. Um, 
So this is the, the black line here is the linear data if you only go back 20 days. And um, the blue line, by the way, is the actual data itself. Um, okay, let's take a quick look. I don't like looking at, um, at YouTube videos online because it really screws things up. But let's look at this. I think this is the solution to the differential equation uh, that someone mentions. But let's see what this is. We're going to go ahead and mute this guy. Um, let's see. Yes, the, 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 the equation being used here um, assumes that the number of people you infect is greater than one, but it also compensates for the fact that some of the people you infect will already be infected. So that's a lower number. Now, because such a small per portion of the world is infected right now, this number is actually going to be very, very... Um, because one, the tau, the proportion that's not infected, tau, the number actually, the percentage infected, is infinitesimally small. Um, so, but, okay. Oh, okay, one minus two equals. Okay, so what we're saying here is, Um, the final epidemic size solves to 1 minus tau equals e to the minus r0 tau, uh, which depends on r0. Okay, we can solve this differential equation, but if you accept that um, r0 for the coronavirus is 2, this is pretty much going to tell you the epidemic's going to kill... Um, like four billion people, I think. But you know what? Let's let's solve this. Um, yeah. So tau is going to be the number, the percentage of people infected. Uh, so let's go ahead and solve that. Um, the problem is it's not going to give us what we what we really want. So one minus t equals uh, x of minus two times t for t, please. Um, That's not what I wanted. I don't know how to use this, do I? Um, let's see if we can just do this. Can we just say solve it? Yeah, that, that doesn't really solve it. That just puts it in another form. Is there an end solve here? Okay. Magic will now happen. We will now plot 1 minus t. We'll plot both of these. Uh, for t goes from 0 to 1, which is the only sensible values. Um, oh. Let's be like this. Okay. So you can see that these values coincide at about 0.8. So that's saying that tau, which is the... Um, final epidemic size, which is the, according to this, we the 80% of the world will get infected. Now, of course, I'm only plotting deaths. I'm not looking at the number infected. So I guess in theory, 80% uh, of the world could get infected. Uh, that's still a lot of people. That's like uh, 7.5 billion people in the world. Um, I mean, that's, that's a lot of people. 6 billion people infected. I don't see that happening. It could happen. So, th so what I'm saying, the problem here is, um, I am I am familiar with this equation, uh, and and the idea is that you have to adjust a little bit for the fact that some people are already infected. Um, uh, transmission probability, right? And then you have to subtract off the people who are already infected, so you can't reinfect them. Okay. So, so thank you. That was actually very useful, um, but I think. In this case, the, the ignoring the people who are already infected, or I guess in this case would be ignoring the people who are already dead, um, there's very few of those. Um, okay. To an SIR model. Hello, Benny. Oh, yes, I remember you, Mr. Benny, the Drake fanboy. 
Um, to the SIR model. What is the SIR model? I don't know. Let's find out. I think this is the model that is exactly what we were talking about. Um, the differential equation model, which is basically it is proportional minus the number of people already infected. Um, so the number susceptible, number infected. Okay, now this is a little bit different because susceptible, we assume there's a portion of the society that's already, uh, that has no vulnerability. Um, and this, I guess, is a um, instruction on how to find this. Okay, I'm bored of that. Y I am I am sort of coding, uh, Mr. Benny. Uh, I am looking at various different models of f curve fitting the coronavirus so far, while trying to make the point that uh, curve fitting is not predictive. And the r way I'm going to make that point um, uh, is apparently I'm not going to make that point. Um, Well, the situation currently, I think, is getting better. But again, I don't like predictive statistics. Um, and that is another point. The geographical area is, is, an, is a factor here. Um, but I don't, I don't believe in predictive statistics. So I can tell you whether, you know, compared to yesterday, we're doing better. Uh, right now, we're looking at the world. We could certainly look at America as well. Um, and even in America, as, as high altitude Chernenkov points out, different uh, states are doing, uh, New York, New Jersey area is doing very poorly right now. Um, most of the other states are doing okay. Uh, we could certainly look at the world meter data and, and, and go from there. We, and I do actually have the deaths, you know, we could, we could do all these things for the, um, here are the deaths in the USA. Why didn't that work? Oh, it's US. Okay. So here's how many deaths we've had in the U.S. through yesterday. Um, yes, and, and this, I'm not sure I believe this, but yeah, the general theory here is uh, the epidemic is has the, uh, when it initially hits, you have exponential growth right at the beginning while people are getting, um, people are getting, uh, you know, people are getting sick and infecting each other very quickly. Uh, then you sort of get this little, uh, you know, uh, linear growth after that. That that seems to be, and I actually kind of want to look at that, um, some people are saying well, you start with exponential growth and then it fades down to linear growth. Um, and so that would be a, that would be a hybrid model uh, that we would be using there. Um, Saying, so, you know, exponential until day n, then linear. Obviously, they'd have to connect at the point where they uh, where they switch from being exponential to linear. Um, but again, I'm that, I mean, some of it is social distancing and people staying at home and getting panicked and stuff and not going out. Um, and so that really slows down the exponential spread. But part of it is also, um, a lot of people who are going to get the coronavirus will actually recover at home and some might <coughs> covered in my cough. You're not going to die. Um, but some people get it and recover from it. So I think the best number to look at is the number of deaths because that is, I mean, not everyone can report Corona deaths correctly, but that is sort of the number that is, um, you know, we, we do, you don't have to worry about how many people you're testing. You don't have to worry about how many people got it and didn't report it because it wasn't serious enough. Uh, that is the uh, number we actually, let's go ahead and bring this sucker back up. Reload to 182,000 deaths in the world. Um, and if you look at the total deaths, again, I'm saying this is this is really exponential right here, where it goes from like here to here. This is kind of getting kind of linear. If you look at it logarithmically, 
you'll see that it's kind I mean, I'm not going to say it's going to smooth out totally. That means there will be no more deaths. Um, but if you accept projection that this will continue, we don't really see it reaching a million. We kind of see it just sort of going up a little. It, I mean, it went up a lot, then it kind of flattened out, then it kind of hit America, and now it's, I say it's flattening out again. But please, all of this should be taken with a grain of salt, because my main point is you can't predict the future, even with statistics. Whoa. Jesus Christ. <coughs> That's something to put on a stream, huh? How long? I don't know, Benny. I don't know. Um, and also, I don't think it's fair to look at the total numbers here because the U.S. is actually has a much bigger population. Um, so per million population, um, the United States is actually not doing that badly. Yeah. Uh, those ladies were because apparently this thing decided that the ads that are appropriate for this site for me are lingerie sites. Um, hopefully that didn't, that was a mistake. I didn't intentionally show that. Um, I don't know why they decided that's what I need to be looking at, but okay. Um, yeah. I, I have to be honest and say I don't necessarily believe in that epidemic model for two reasons. One, I don't believe the R0 for coronavirus is equal to two. That was computed at some point early in the virus's history. I, I just don't think that it is actually, that is the correct number. Um, second of all, I believe there are people who get infected and recover at home without ever being tested or ever being going to the hospital or ever counting as a case. Um, so I don't necessarily see that uh, the exponential spread will not necessarily be reflected in the number of, ac in the number of cases. Uh, you can, and now, and the and the point is, uh, if you look at the exponential data, okay, I'm going to ask you this question because you seem to be pretty smart, Mister Mister High Altitude Chernikov. Um, the R zero tells us that every one person infects two other people, but the question is, what's the time period on that? Is that like per day? Every it, should we be seeing the virus doubling every day, or is that over a different period of time? Uh, is that eventually over the whole life of the epidemic time? Because that's an important factor. Because if you're saying that the virus is going to double every day, that's not happened. Then we would be up to 2 to the 90. Well, okay. But, I mean, I think the R0 value is not well defined unless you say that. You have to give a time. Um, okay. But when we say R0 is 2, what is the time step? Because if you're saying this virus is doubling every day, it's infected 2 to the 91th power people, which, and there aren't that many people on the Earth. Um, if you do the exponential fit, it's like 7% per day. 7% um, increase per day. So it's 1.07 per day. So I guess what we could do here is... Well, let's have some fun with this. Um... Let me look at my best fit exponential model, which I have up here somewhere. T1344X. Uh, okay, so that's the model. This is the model that says daily we're getting an increase of... Um, this is going to turn out to be very close to 1, point 1 plus this number because... So 7.4%, but, oh, okay, per week. Okay, okay, then it's, um, hold on one sec. All right, one sec, I'm going to mute you guys. I need to blow my nose. Muting. And we're back. Okay. Um, okay, well, yeah, that's fine. No, no, I mean, I, that, that actually makes some sense. 
Okay, so if this is the growth rate uh, over one day, over seven days, you just multiply this by seven or take it to the seventh power. Okay, and in that case, if you're looking at it per week, the current best fit R0 is 1.65-ish. Um, um, now, see, here's my problem with this. I mean, it, it, this might actually be correct. But you look at 1.65 versus 2, and you say, well, that's pretty much the same thing, right? I mean, um, doubling per week is pretty much the same thing as increasing by 1.6465 every week, and that is not the that is not true. Um, du doubling is very. I don't use. I use. I'm using a CentOS on a virtual machine, not Windows. Um, and my point is that you know you look at 1.65 and 2 and think they're very similar numbers, but they're not. They make very different projections. Um, so if you take this number as being um, correct then the doubling time will be in days in days will be god damn it will be about 9.7 days not 7 days which is a little bit higher um but again the okay and then then there is that little tau factor which will eventually come into play if this and again, I'm looking at deaths, so not not the number of, of uh, infections. So again, the model is not for deaths; it's for infections. Um, I guess I could look at the number of infected people, but see, I don't believe these numbers for the infections because there's a lot of people who are getting infected who are not um, being tested. Is my is my claim? Uh, now, if we go to the United States and look per state in the United States which unfortunately I don't have that data loaded right now. Um, what the hell? Probable deaths, probable deaths, probable cases. Um, And here, if you look at the deaths per million population, uh, New York has now exceeded 0.1% deaths. That is, that is pretty bad. That is pretty bad. New Jersey, not actually a close second. Most of the nation doing okay. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I mean, part of it is because we don't really want to be testing people. Even if someone has the coronavirus and has a mild case of it, uh, and gets over it. We don't necessarily be wanting to be. We don't necessarily want to be testing that person. <coughs> Apparently, I also have the coronavirus. We only want to be testing people who might need medical attention. So anyway, and we could we could look at this all day. And the point I was trying to make is, um, and it's made in other places as well. Uh, your mathematical model can vary greatly depending on your assumptions. Um, I mean, what does the word stochastic mean to you? Okay, I guess that is actually a really good word there. Um, that's actually a fantastic um, Damn. I would make you a moderator, except I don't know how to do that. Um, or I don't want to actually make anyone a moderator. But yeah, I think this is exactly what we're saying. Randomly determined having a random probability distribution that can be analyzed but may not be predicted precisely. No, I don't. As far as I know, I don't have the coronavirus. I mean, maybe I have it and haven't been. Because I, I do have this dry cough going on. Not in one sec. Okay, that might have helped. Um, but I don't think I have the coronavirus. Um, I might. If symptoms get worse, there's no way to tell right now. Um, some people believe that as the weather gets warmer, corona won't be able to transmit as much. Um, but we don't know. 
So we really, we really, I think um, High Altitude Chernenkov, you des deserve some kind of prize. I don't know if I can give you a prize. Let me see if I can, um, what can I do? I've got some slash powers here. Um, ooh. What does that do? Oh, cool. Oh, that might be a good way to keep track of what my what the fuck I'm doing in my streams. Okay. I can't see any way to give you special... I think I have... Everyone gets, like, points or something. Um... Oh, I want to show a timestamp. Um... That's what these are. No filters. I have no filters. Holy crap. What 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 the hell is this? Now I've got three icons in front of you. Um Ten my bread. Okay, like I said, I think the epidemiological models are pretty simple, and in this case we're because so few people are infected, we should still be at the uh, exponential growth stage. Uh, but let me fix something here. Um, okay, that maybe will help. Okay, go attend your bread. Testing, one, two, three. Okay, why is it saying... Oh, 8.08 p.m. because uh, this is uh, the uh, UTC. Okay. Um, what the hell else did I want to do? Um, sorry, I'm being distracted one more time by, um, okay. I've been on for two hours and 20 minutes, but if a uh, high altitude Trenekov have a good whatever it is you're doing, um, Benny the Drake fanboy, if you have any suggestions for the stream, I'm going to try to see what I was going to do. Um, uh, I think I've, I've accomplished some of what I wanted to do. The next thing I really wanted to do, though, is... Because we had to do this process step by step four different times. What we really want to do is have a, a procedure, or what they call a, a function, or I think, I think the module is what Mathematica calls it, that you give it a list of these numbers, and it sort of spits all this out for you. It, it returns functions that model this data. It gives you the residuals. Uh, it gives you the estimates based on those functions, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I don't think I've defined any modules right now. Um, I have to find some functions, but none of them appear to use a uh, real modular kind of data. Um, at least not here. I think I have to find a module somewhere down here. Um, uh, which I, Oh, it's called a block. I think these guys call it a block. There we are. And that is basically given a list um, of just numbers, uh, find the best squared estimate of it uh, to the nth polynomial, to a polynomial of degree n. Technically a polynomial, yeah, it is a degree, a polynomial of degree n. So this is an example of how you would do something like that. Um, and uh, this would be nice to sort of have for our example, where we said, okay, give us the list of numbers, we'll give you back three models, we'll give you back <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we'll give you back a linear model, a logarithmic fit model, and a true exponential model. Um, uh, and then also give you back the residuals, so you can sort of plug in different lists until you find the one that has the best residual for you. 
and therefore say the linear estimate is best for this time. Okay, I think I'm talking to a void now, which I, which I enjoy doing. Uh, but if anyone in chat wants to say anything, wants to do anything, let me know. Otherwise, I think I'm going to call it a stream. I can't believe I've been going for more than two hours. Um, and, of course, I've got this COVID thing i got to deal with, so, you know. All right, uh, thank you, everyone, for watching the stream, and I'm going to say goodbye for now. May be back later today. May not be back later today. May die of COVID. Don't know. Bye for now.